mean, so look, we all go to the internet for help, right? I do it too when I've, there's something I need an answer to, I can't find. And um, one of my favorite things to do is scroll through these Bobcat Facebook groups and look at some of the questions. And if, if I can help, I'll answer. But if I can't help, if I just don't know, I just don't bother with it, I don't answer because I don't want to give bad information if, if I don't need to. So let, let's just look at one of these and we'll look through some of the comments. We'll test some of the comments and see if, uh, if, if you know, it will actually work. Um, so here, here's the question. We're not going to name names or anything, but it says, how can I bypass the seat bar sensor on my Bobcat 753? Question mark. Bobcat dealer is closed till Monday and I need to move it from the spot it's in and the bucket won't move. Any ideas? So. What he's got is a 753, he posted a picture of it. The 753, we know it's got the square headlights. It is a F series. And we've also got a G series back behind us, but we know that his, based off the picture that he posted, is an F series. So we're gonna look at this one. So let's jump right into the comments. And there's a lot of comments. So the very first one is, disable it is dangerous. Wait till Monday and get it fixed. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with that. I do not recommend you ever bypass or disable one of the safeties, but Sometimes even in the field, we get in a situation where we have to move the machine and we may or may not have to bypass some stuff to get it moving. Okay, next one is just unplug and jump the switch. Well, what does that mean? So the original poster says, okay, there's three wires. Do I jump all three wires? And he says, yes. So I'm assuming yes, jump all three wires. Well, let's test that. We've got three wires. We've got a positive, negative, and then we've got a signal wire, a feedback wire. So if we twist all three of those together, according to him, it should allow you to move the machine. Okay. So on the F-Series, our arm bar switch is um, right up here in the front corner, and we unplug it, we see we've got this three-wire uh, Deutz connector. So I guess in order for you to twist the wires, I don't know, maybe you'd have to make something. I mean, fortunately for me, I've got three wires from Deutz connector that's already got the pins on it. So what we can do is just pin them on here. And I don't recommend doing this because like I said, it's, you got a positive, a negative and a feedback, right? And the F series, this is a 12 volt system and, and we'll look at that in a minute. So what happens if you short, you know, positive, negative ground? It, it's possible something's gonna give, right? Something's gonna short out. I don't know. Let me do this on my tractor before you do it on yours, because if I blow it up, whatever. It's all in the sake of testing, right? So let's turn the ignition on. And all three wires. Okay, I didn't see any sparks. But back here on my uh, Bix controller, the seat bar switch is flashing. It's flashing three times fast. And that's gonna be a short to ground. So with that flashing, it is not gonna unlock anything. It's not gonna help us. We still can't move our arms, okay? So twisting all three wires together does not work. Bad idea. Let's turn the machine back off. Let's see what it is. It says, um, I can't remember this is the next comment. I can't remember, but I'm thinking if you unplug it, it'll work. Okay. Well, it is unplugged. Turn it on. Nothing. We, we have no light. So the Bix did not come on. It does not show us anything. So <laughs> unplugging it. Sorry. That's not going to help either. Um, the next one is you have to do a jumper. Okay, well, that doesn't really narrow it down any, does it? Let's see if we can get a little more specific. He says, between which three wires? It's a three-wire connector, and this guy says it's a proximity sensor. Could you send me a photo of it? He sends a photo of it, and no one answers. Okay. Um, the next one is, I believe it's magnetic. I had one bother, uh, I don't know what he's saying here, in the wintertime took a big magnet and swiped it. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. I'm, I'm assuming that he swiped the sensor with the magnet and it started working. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, I don't know how we're going to test that. Um, 
open the, the next one says open the cab, take it off, clean the magnet and rotate till the light comes on the Bix panel. Have to do it my 751 rust particles clean to magnet. So what he's saying is a seat bar sensor in here, as you rotate it, it's a magnetic sensor and he's getting uh, metal particles on it and it, it interferes with the, with the pickup on it. It's, it's like a proximity switcher or like a Hall Effect type sensor. So when you buy these sensors new and you replace them, they actually put a little metal tab on the sensor for shipping. So if you put this sensor in and you rotate it down, the magnetic pickup does not, it, it won't work because that magnetic or that little metal tab is still on there from the factory and I've learned that the hard way. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I don't really know how to test it because this one's clean. This one actually works, so I know if I plug it in, it'll it'll work. We're just testing it as if we're assuming that it doesn't work. So I guess it is possible, although I haven't seen it um, in my area where debris gets in there after you pull off that metal tab. I've never seen enough debris in there cause it not to work. So uh, I can't say that that won't work, but anyways. This guy says, bull, beep, bull crap. You can't bypass that piece of crap. <laughs> so the sensor has on my T750 went out two times. The third time it was in and out. And there's a big round magnet on my 9020B. We pulled the seat bar sensor and took a grinder and ground the contact side smooth. And then took out the magnet, zip tied the magnet. And it's like that till still to this day. So. <laughs> it sounds like he actually tore the sensor open, pulled out the magnetic part and zip tied it to it. So, so his arm bar, whether he has it up or down, it's going to release and, and be working all the time. So that's kind of dangerous. I don't think that's a good idea. Next guy says following, F-A-L-L-O-I-N-G. I guess he's following the thread because he wants to know how to do it. You plug it, jump all wires most of the time, that'll work. Dangerous of doing it. Number one, the grammar's terrible on half these things, but so we just jumped all the wires. That didn't work. Check the door switch. It got stuck on mine with the bucket up, the release button, the strike, the magnet, the machine won't work with the door open. Um, so his is not a full cab machine. Um, there are door sensors on there, but I don't think that's a problem because he does not have a door on his machine. So that might be something to check is the door switch. Sometimes those do cause issues, but his doesn't have a door, so I don't know. Unplug it and put a wire in the two holes. Yeah, thanks guy. We got, um, we got three pins, so what two holes do you recommend? I mean, I've got a wire here, so okay. Maybe, maybe he means two pin. Okay, so th this is just a jumper wire. So let's jump pin one to pin two. Nothing, no light on the Bix. Pin one to pin three. Aha, uh -huh. there's our three uh, blinking lights, which tells us our fault. It's actually in fault, so it will not unlock uh, the Bix um, coil or anything. So we can't operate with that flashing. So we know that's not bad. We know we got a short to ground. So let's try pin two to pin three. Uh, let's see, get that plugged in. Nothing, no lights, no faults. Back to pin one. So there's only a few combinations you can do with three wires. And nothing on that. So jumping the wires, um, just two, so not twisting all three of them together, but just jumping two to two did not work. Let's see. I turned my old 753 and then put a sheetrock screw in it until the new part came in as magnetic. So he, so he had a problem probably with the bushings in there and they, they just wasn't lining up right so he lined up the magnet got the light to turn on put a screw in it to hold it so he all right on my t300 i removed the c bar when it was jacking up i guess messing up held the sensor deal in the right place hot glued it in place um so what he did is since his bushings were probably messed up he um hot glued the sensor in place where it's actually making contact and turning the machine on. I've actually got one over here. Let's go take a look at that. So this is my old 250 that I picked up. We're still working on it. Um, but when I picked it up, we have the seat bar sensor here. It does work, but you can see that it's in place and it's all electrical taped up. So it's not glued, but it does have a bolt through the center of it and it's all taped up. So he, it, it does work. But now the thing is, is the machine will operate with the seat bar up at all times. So. 
um, well, well I, I say it all times, we still have to press the um, push to operate button to work, but it will, when you press that button, it'll work with the arm bar up. So yeah, that is kind of dangerous. We don't recommend doing that. All right, so the guy who actually got the closest to this actual right answer says, you can't really bypass the switch. You have a hot ground and a feedback. Um, eight volts on the hot side, and the controller is looking for four volts on the feedback. So jumping it to feedback wire, it will code short to battery. And that's what we were seeing on this one, you know, when we twisted the wires together. Uh, short, uh, short to ground is what it was. Unless you, unless you have something to cut the voltage back from the hot wire, it isn't going to work. Uh, so the OP said, so true. So basically he's asking, do we need a resistor? So yeah, you would need to try to figure out exactly what the voltage is. He's saying four volts. Now, now remember, we, we got F series, we've got a G series we're gonna look at, we've got M series, we've got R series, but, but right now we're just gonna look at a, a G and F because we know that the guy has an F series, right? And, and this is important because we're gonna get in here and, and check those uh, voltages. Um, then this guy says, replying to that, winner, winner, hot damn Skinner, skin and dinner. By the way, always remember rule of thumb, battery plus to negative ground for maximum smoke. And that's, that's kind of what I was afraid of. When we twisted all three, like I said, we have a positive or negative. We don't want to twist those together, but I went ahead and testing it, tested it. But all that voltage actually goes through the BIX controller. So we're not actually shorting straight to ground or shorting the inside of the controller, but the controller kind of protects itself inside there. So there was no smoke. So that guy, no battery to negative ground for maximum smoke. What he's saying is it'll blow up short. No, but it did not happen. Now let's look at how this actually works. So to properly do this, hopefully we can see the Bix controller back here. What we're gonna look for is this, the seat bar light. I don't know if we can see that in our little device that I built here. This is a great device to test these systems for, tell what the incoming and outgoing voltage is. That way we can test the machine side and test our um, arm bar sensor itself. So we're gonna go ahead and get this plugged in. And remember, what we're gonna test first is what the original uh, guy said on here. Hopefully we can see this. We're at 3.9 volts. He said four volts. Let's go ahead and take that up. Let's take that up to four volts. 3.9. So we're at 4.0 and right now the seat bar switch is actually flashing so that's telling us it's a fault. Um, I can press this and we can see we've got 10 volts coming in so from battery voltage through the controller. So the input voltage is 10 volts. Our signal wire now is showing four volts, but we are showing a fault. So let's ease this on up to, okay, we're at uh, 4.7, 4.6. The light is on solid. So right now our Bix controller is satisfied at 4.6 volts. Okay, I went down to 4.4 and we're back into fault, okay. So anything above 4.5 volts seems to be solid. Five volts, we got a solid light. We're at six volts, solid light. 7.2, okay, so 7.5, it goes into fault. So anything between 4.5 and 7.5 is satisfying the controller. So if we split that at six volts, that's dead center. Our light is solid. So six volts is really what this style BIC system wants to see. And again, without this voltage regulator is really the only way to do this other than trying to do the calculations and soldering two resistors together. So now let's test this on our G series. I've got a different uh, controller on here, but we can see just like they said in the post that our incoming voltage is eight volts. Let's click this, and we've got our outgoing voltage set to four volts. So on this machine, the light should turn on. We can see the seat bar light is not on at four volts. So let's take this down some more and see if we can get that light to come on. Three volts, three, aha, 2.6 volts. The light actually came on. Let's take this down to two volts. Okay, there we are. Seat bar light is on. The seat bar indeed is in the up position and our output voltage on this one is two volts. Different series machines, different voltages. 
This G series likes two volts. The um, F series likes six volts feedback to the controller. And these are two different controllers. So hopefully that made sense, man. That's kind of fun to test other people's theories within those uh, threads in the uh, Facebook forum. So if you see something with a bunch of answers that um, just is crazy all over the place, maybe you'd like to see tested, shoot me a link to the thread and we'll go through the comments and see if any of them works, which ones are right and which ones are wrong. So that was pretty fun. Thanks for watching.